Let's look at this problem. This is a problem that they give you to see whether you're worthy for business school. Okay? You're holding a bag of gold. You're on a frozen lake. And it turns out that that lake has a surface which is perfectly frictionless, and you're in the middle. What do you do? Throw the money. Take the money and throw it this way. You'll go the other way. You just got X'd out of business school. <laughs> if you let go of the money, you're not worthy. <laughs> okay. So let's see how you could get off of this pond of ice without letting go of the money. So I could just blow. <gasps> No, that's not going to work. Turns out, if you're going to business school, you're going to have to take off your clothes and throw them. And that's how we know that you're ready for business school. If you will strip naked before letting go of that goal, you should go to business school. Okay? Now, let's look at the, the poor Gary problem. Gary, after studying Newton's third law, is finally convinced that it's true. Unfortunately, he's convinced himself while sitting in a classroom with a single closed door. He wants to go out, but he says, if I push on the door to go out, Newton's third law tells me the door's gonna push back just as hard with an equal force. That force is gonna cancel the force I push with. Even if I push as hard as I can, that door is gonna push back just as hard Oh no, I'm stuck in this room. Why did I ever study physics? You feel like that sometimes? Yeah. Now clearly, clearly there's a flaw in Gary's reasoning. Because he can push on that door, and that door is going to open. Find the flaw in Gary's reasoning. Talk to your neighbor, please. Ray, where are you, Ray? So, yes, sir. You're not in a frictionless environment. Ah, the friction on the floor. I am so embarrassed that I forgot to tell you this. Um, it turns out that the night before, the janitors came in and they were using a new kind of wax. It's called frictionless, totally frictionless. <laughs> and, I mean, I, it's just a fluke. Um, and he pushes, the door opens, and he scoots, but the door does open. Brave soul, yes. The hinges on the edge of the door. Ah, the hinges on the door. Um, what? Time? They kind of focus and like it's not like a wall. It's not just like it kind of concentrates where that resistance. Is. Okay, let's suppose there weren't any hinges okay. and it's just kind of leaning there. I push, it falls down, I go out. Brave soul, where are you? Yes. Does equal and opposite reaction include direction of the reaction? Yes, and. And so one is a, a force that way on the door, and one is a force this way on the gear. So they're equal and opposite. Yes, sir? He has to have a greater mass than the door. Oh, oh, and that, that's another coincidence you can barely, scarcely believe. It turns out, I mean, who would have guessed? Gary and the door have exactly the same mass. I, I didn't see that coming, but it's true. Uh, equal and opposite are always relevant, so I'm gonna say no to that one. The door opens, he just might ask, not necessarily get out. He, the door will open, but he might not get out. But why does the door open? Why don't these cancel each other? Uh, there's an extra force, so in order for it to cancel out, it has to be the same type of force. Okay, so they are the same kind of forces. I'm not sure I understand. Uh, the force we didn't cancel because the forces are not exerted on the same object. Oh, would you please say that again? That is so wonderful. I forgot what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I will remember what you said. You said, they cannot cancel because they do not act on the same object. That's it entirely, okay? 
If I draw a free body diagram for the door, there's lots of forces on that diagram. There's the weight down on the door, there's the hinges pushing up, uh, the door, and there's this force, a push by Gary, on the door. Now if I draw a free body diagram for the Gary, again there's a weight of Gary, there's the normal by the floor on Gary. If we didn't wax it with the frictionless wax, there would be a friction force by the floor on Gary. And then there's this force, the normal by the door on the Gary. And these two forces by third law are always equal and opposite. If this one gets bigger, so does this one. But they cannot cancel because they do not act on the same object. When I'm interested in the motion of the door, whether it will open or not, I use F net equals MA for the door. Now, F net is just all the forces on the door. This one can't cancel that one because it doesn't get to play in this equation. Likewise, when I'm looking at the motion of Gary, whether he slides across the room or not, I use F net equals MA for the Gary. And that F net is all the forces on this diagram. And again, that force can't cancel this one because it's not in the equation. The most famous version of this question is the old cart, horse and cart problem in New York Central Square, uh, Central Park. Um, if you've got a horse pulling a carriage through Central Park, if the carriage is always pulling back on the horse just as hard as the horse is pulling forward on the carriage, how do they get anywhere? And the answer is only one of those forces is speeding up the cart. The other one is slowing down the horse. Okay, see if your neighbor understands that. Okay. How many of you want to go to uh, medical school, be doctors? You got to take the MCAT. And on that MCAT, there's this famous bug problem that everybody misses. A bug splats on the windshield of a car moving at 100 miles an hour. Which feels the greater force, the bug or the car? Newton says they're the same. But everyone misses this problem because they're really answering a different problem. Who had the worst day? <laughs> yeah. Now that force is the same, but that force is not enough to affect the car at all, doesn't slow it down a bit. But that force is enough to ruin the bug's whole day. Okay? Now, another example of that is if I drop this book, it goes rushing down. Now, Newton says that if the Earth is pulling down with a one pound gravitational force, that the book is pulling back up on the Earth. But when I let go, they don't rush to meet each other, do they? The forces are the same, but the effects, the acceleration, depend on the mass. Now in this case, the force is just enough to make this book accelerate at 9.8, let's call it 10 meters per second per second down. You take that same force and apply it to the Earth, negligible, negligible. Okay? Now, in your tutorial homework, you have this problem. You have four identical links of a chain, and it's being suspended by a rope from the ceiling. You're asked to draw free body diagrams for each of those links one, two, three, and four. Now, because they're identical, they would all have the same mass, and hence the same weight. For the sake of, of uh, concreteness, 
Let's give that a number. Let's call that weight three newtons. Okay, just make that number up. Three newtons. Now when you're drawing free body diagrams of things that interact, I would suggest, I would strongly suggest, that you always draw the free body diagram of the simplest object first. The object that's touching the fewest other things. Which object should I draw the free body diagram for? Four. Four. Okay. So, I've got the weight force. There's no magnets in this problem. What touches four? Three. Does it push or does it pull? Yeah, now here we've got a kind of a, a gray area. If, if I look at what's actually happening, the one link is pulling up on the other link, and I would call that a tension force. But if you look really, really closely at what's happening at the surface between those two links, they're pushing on each other. And so whether you call that a tension force looking from afar, or whether you call that a normal force looking up really close, I don't care. You'll get full credit either way. I'm calling it a tension force, and I'm here to tell you that if this is three newtons, that's got to be three newtons. They, have, they are equal and opposite by what law? Yeah, if you said third law, you've got to slap yourself silly until you get over it. Let's look. These cannot be related by the third law. They're not the same flavor force. They're on the same dot. They don't have the same indices reversed. These are equal and opposite by second law. And when you invoke the second law, you have to qualify your statement. These are equal and opposite by second law with zero acceleration. If I've got zero acceleration for this link, my diagram has to scream balance. I only have one force up, one force down. They got to balance. My second law was zero acceleration. Now I use third law. Three cannot pull up on four without four pulling back down on three just as hard. If this one's three newtons, that one's three newtons. And I put a tick mark to indicate that they are part of a marriage, part of a third law companionship. Okay? Now the only other thing touching three is two, and it pulls up. Now by second law, with zero acceleration, if this is three and that's three, that's got to be six. My diagram has to scream balance. Now, if two pulls up on three, three has to pull down on two by third law. And I use two tick marks to indicate that they're part of a match set. I then ask what else pulls on two? Well, one does, it pulls up. If this force is six newtons, and this one is three newtons, by Newton's second law with zero acceleration, that must be nine newtons. Again, I use the third law. Two, I'm sorry, one cannot pull up on two without two pulling back down on one. And I put three tick marks there. And finally, I have the rope pulling up. If this pole is 9 newtons and this one is 3 newtons, that's got to be 12 newtons, which just happens to be the weight of all four links together. Check that your neighbor got this homework problem correct. <laughs> <laughs>